Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a thermal camera that is designed for your iPhone or your Android phone. You plug it into your USB-C port at the bottom. They also have a lightning adapter for older iPhones. And when you get the app loaded up, what you get is a macro thermal camera here. It does much better closer in than it does with uh, larger landscape kinds of thermal photography. So you're not gonna be using this out in the woods looking for animals or whatever. But if you wanted to inspect something close in, like an electrical panel or a Raspberry Pi like I'm doing here, this might be pretty useful for that. You can actually get in super close here, and I'll show you how you can focus it as well uh, as we get further along into the review here. Now, I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that this came in free of charge from Thermal Master. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this thermal camera is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at $299. I was impressed with the build quality on this. It is all metal. You can install it either front facing or rear facing like I have it installed right now. One thing to note is that it does have some leeway for thicker cases. As you can see, I don't have a case on my phone but the connector is a little bit longer than usual. So if you have a thicker rugged case, it might fit, but it's going to vary based on the case that you use. So you may or may not be out of luck here. You might need to get some kind of extension cable to make it work in the end. If you have an older iPhone with a lightning connector, they do have an adapter here in the box, although everything feels a little rickety when you've got that long adapter there hanging off of it. So you might want to get a different USB-C adapter. There is a focus ring on this, which you use to focus in on things. I can demo that for you real quick. So as we get in closer to our Raspberry Pi here, I can turn the dial and get a better look at the component that I'm trying to get to. And then of course, if I go back out, it gets blurry again, but I can just turn the focus ring uh, back to get a clearer image. Again, I found this doesn't work well when you're pointing it out at a room or something. You definitely need to get in a little bit closer for the best results here. And that's because the sensor on this is very, very tiny. As you can see, the uh, lens there is very, very small compared to my iPhone camera lens. The result here is that this shoots video or pictures at a resolution of 256 by 192 native. What they do have on here is this X3 feature that's enabled by default. When this is activated, it does use some AI enhancements to give you a slightly better resolution, which is 512 by 384. But either way, these are super low resolution. So if you want detail, you're going to have to get that camera in close to get it. Now you can record video on this. This is a shot of my Raspberry Pi booting up a little bit earlier. You can see the components heating up as things come online. And what you'll see on the far left there is the SD card heating up too. The SD card became one of the hotter uh, components on the board here as everything came to life. And it will adjust the temperature ranges as you go. Um, so here's an example of my stovetop lighting. This of course was taken with my iPhone camera before I turned on the thermal video. And so when I did the thermal video here, you can see the detail is dramatically reduced given the resolution. And then you can see that stove coming on. What happens though, is that if it has too high of a temperature, it's got this burn-in detection. So it did require me to step back a little bit, uh, but you can see the stove going there. That's actually the stove not on fire. That's just what it looks like in a thermal camera. And you can see the temperature range between the ambient environment and the stove top there. So it does maintain a pretty good range of temperature. And in the app here, I'll pull it back up, uh, there are settings to adjust the scale. Not very fine settings though. So if I hit the auto button at the top, you'll see that we have one option to look at a range between negative four degrees Fahrenheit and 302 degrees Fahrenheit. And there's another one here that can deal with hotter temperatures that go from 212 to 1022. But you can't have a range that goes from negative four to 1022. But most things won't have that uh, big of a variation in temperature. Now, if you wanted to have the scale up all the time, if you go into the settings on the right-hand side here and go to scale and turn that feature on, you will get a scale in the window there so you can see what the minimum and the maximum that it's reading uh, as you are looking at your object. And I also did some footage here of some things around the house. So this is my hot water line that is running through and it's not bad for this kind of thing. And then what you can also do is pull up the phone's camera to give you an inset as to what you are pointing at if it's hard to make it out on the thermal. 
And that's really important for something like this shot here of my electrical panel, because as you can see, there's just not a lot of detail when you go out further from one of these objects. This camera really likes to be close in, so having that uh, other camera view that's coming from your phone camera can be really helpful in figuring out exactly what it is that you're looking at. Because the second you get a little too far away, the image gets kind of mushy due to the low resolution. Now, of course, this does require their app to operate. You'll find that in the Google Play or the iPhone store. And it gives you a good amount of features, actually. So right now I've got it in this color mode here. I can actually switch this to something else. So they have a white hot mode here. You've got black hot. You've got the one we were just looking at. They've got one here that looks for hot spots in the area that you're investigating. You'll see the temperature range here goes from about 74 or so to 121 degrees Fahrenheit. You can, of course, enable Celsius, but I uh, switched mine into uh, Fahrenheit. And as you can see here, you've got a bunch of different color schemes that you can bring to bear on your particular project. So that's pretty useful. One other useful thing here, let me go back to what I had before. I'll do this one. Uh, one other useful thing here is that you can draw circles, for example, or different shapes, and then look within that shape for a temperature range. So for example, I can put a circle there and a box here, and what it will do is it will uh, give us the temperature range within that selection. So if you have your phone locked down and you want to look at two different temperature ranges on something that you're looking at, you have the ability to do that. Um, so lots of nice little features here that you can use for your analysis. Again, this is a lower end kind of device, even though it is a bit pricey, but it does give you some features that you might see on something that costs a lot more kind of in a dedicated uh, thermal camera situation. Now, I find this most useful for finding hot spots on an electrical panel or looking at your uh, Raspberry Pi, for example. But if you wanted a more accurate temperature reading, if the temperature readings just don't seem right to you, there are adjustments that can be made in the variable correction section here. And apparently there are different types of emissivities uh, with different substances that you have to adjust for. There's a little bit in the manual about this, but not much. So you're kind of on your own to figure all this stuff out. They do give you a table here that you can use as a reference for setting some of the baselines. But this is something that I think is not necessarily designed for accurate temperature measurement, but rather for troubleshooting when you're out in the field. It is rather small, so you can keep it in your pocket. You can plug it into your phone without having to buy a more expensive thermal camera. Those more expensive devices will do a lot more, uh, but this is something that I think is useful just for a quick look before you uh, dive into a project. They do give you a nice little carrying case here as well. This is powered by your phone, so it will draw from the phone's battery, so be aware of that. You might see your battery life reduce a little bit if you're using it for extended periods of time. But for a basic hotspot detector, it should be good for those types of projects. It does much better, as I mentioned, closer in than it does at further distances, but it's got pretty decent macro capabilities and you can get in pretty close on a circuit board as you saw earlier. So there are some use cases here that I think can be quite useful. Just don't count on this to make your scientific measurements. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.